Hey, it's Rory with SurgeonChar.com and you join me in my car as I drive home from work. So you might be wondering, why are we in your car, Rory? Why have you chosen to take us for this ride? Well, besides the awesome view of my dirty back mirror, there's actually a reason because right now I'm going to try out Touch & Go's brand new RFID scanning system for the first time. But before that, here's some backstory for those of you who aren't up to speed. I think everybody knows what a smart tag is. It's this device that you can stick your touch and go card in and then it'll allow you to go through toll booths without the need to faff about with your window. Convenient, yes, but that technology is pretty ancient and we could certainly do better. That's where RFID comes in. From a technology standpoint, RFID or radio frequency identification is a far superior system. It scans much more reliably and can allow for gateless gantry systems like you'd find in Singapore or Australia. Plus, the one we're using is a passive RFID tag. That means instead of a big bulky device, all you need is a really slim sticker. No battery is required. So, you can imagine how stoked I was when we found out that Touch & Go was finally making this upgrade and how excited I was to try it out. So now we're actually approaching the uh, toll booth and I have a GoPro mounted at the top of my car. I don't know if it's actually recording or if it is even still there. I hope it is. Uh, but we are approaching the toll booth so I'm going to drive through the RFID lane and we'll see if it works. I hope it works. I don't want it to get stuck with this whole camera setup and have it look really awkward but uh, yeah I want you to be here with me as I break my RFID genity it'll be interesting so the booth is quite limited I think there's only one booth here with the RFID tag yes I see it okay so we're gonna try it out I hope it works otherwise it'll be really awkward but uh, yeah let's go Okay, so I'm gonna, they recommend that you hit it at about 20 kilometers per hour. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. There's actually a car in front of me. So I don't know, okay, okay, he's going away, okay. So I'm gonna go really slowly now. 20 km per hour. Please work, please work, please work, please work. Oh, uh, I totally forgot to mention this one thing. You see, the reason I was able to get my hands on an RFID tag so early is because it's actually not open to everyone just yet. It is in what they call a public pilot program where it is only available to a small subset of registered users. So, you know, since it's in this really early stage, I was a little worried that it wouldn't work. Please work. Please work. Oh! It worked! It totally worked! Wow! So, uh, that was the first try. I'm kind of, I was kind of worried, so I like basically drove to what was a complete stop. Uh, I didn't know if it was going to work, so I don't think that's like a really fair test of how good this technology is. But it worked. That's the important thing. I survived an embarrassing moment, uh, or rather a potentially embarrassing moment of getting stuck with all these cameras and lights pointing at me. <laughs> but yeah, it worked. So I guess I shouldn't be that surprised, right? Because they've been testing this technology for like quite a while. There are already like RFID stuff all over the place and they wouldn't lo roll out something that wasn't going to work at least once. After this first time though, I used the RFID tag a whole bunch more times. In the dark, in the day, when it was raining, and every single time it worked flawlessly. I even pushed entry speeds to about 30 km per hour and it still scanned without issue on the toll booths that I frequented. That said, my colleague who is also an RFID tester tells me that Scanning accuracy depends on the toll booth and performance may vary from toll booth to toll booth. For instance, if I'm at Karinchi Link, it would scan a couple of inches before the boom gate, while others may scan a lot earlier, like maybe a car's length. So, everything works, everyone's happy, new Malaysia, right? Well, no, not really. 
You see, RFID is supposed to push us forward. It's supposed to unlock a whole bunch of possibilities that simply weren't possible before this. But as it is right now, it is only barely as convenient as the current systems that we already have. In fact, if you take everything into consideration, it might just be a little less convenient. I mean, just take something as simple as the balance readout you get when you go through a toll booth. In case you didn't already know, the RFID tag doesn't charge your touch and go card the way a smart tag does. Instead, it's actually hooked up to the touch and go e-wallet. So every time you go through a toll booth, the fee will be deducted from your e-wallet instead. Unfortunately, whenever you go through the toll booth, the little screen on the side doesn't tell you how much money you have left in your e-wallet. It doesn't tell you your balance. The only way to check is to actually go into the app and look at the number there, which as you might imagine is a little bit dangerous when you're driving. I don't know, maybe just have it push a notification to your phone. That'd be swell. Oh, and uh, while you're working on that touch and go, could you also figure out how to do auto reloading on the e-wallet? My readers have really been haranguing me about that. Thanks. Then there is the issue of installation. Unlike a smart tag that you can actually buy from a vending machine, you can only get your RFID sticker installed by a professional. Right now, that means you'll have to head to one of their fitment centers, of which there are only five. The last time I tried to schedule an appointment, I couldn't lock one down until more than a month later. I mean, if they're having this much trouble with the 100,000 or so public testers, I can't imagine what's gonna happen if they open this up to the millions of cars on our roads. Not to mention the fact that you actually have to take time out of your day just to get this installed. But Touch and Go do have measures in place. They say that they're going to open up more fitment centers, including ones in petrol stations. And they've also got plans for something like a mobile on-site installer, where they'll actually go to you to install the RFID tag. And they're also open to the idea of self-installation. Of course, intention is one thing. What matters is how it is executed. And honestly, if we're talking about execution, I think the biggest hurdle to fully realizing the potential of our RFID system is the big move towards a gateless gantry. In my time with the RFID tag, I found that they work about as well as a smart tag. But the problem is, it's not supposed to work as well as a smart tag. It's supposed to be a lot better. What went wrong here? Well, when I spoke to the RFID people, they tell us that it's not because of the technology, because our RFID system is entirely capable of supporting a gateless gantry where motorists can pass through them at highway speeds. Instead, the limitation comes from our existing tolling infrastructure. You see, in a five-lane highway, they tell me that you only really need about three overhead scanners running at full capacity to be able to seamlessly detect traffic going through it. But to fit them into our existing toll booths, which only scan one lane, they've had to significantly lower the power of these scanners so that they don't accidentally scan adjacent lanes as well. Because of this, our scanners have been handicapped and they currently only work about as well as, well, smart tag. However, even if we were to demolish all the old tolls and erect brand new gateless gantries, we're still faced with another problem. How do we deal with people who don't have RFID tags or those who simply just don't have enough money in their e-wallet? Typically, there will be some kind of optical character recognition or OCR system that can pick up number plates as they pass through gantries. For example, in Australia, if you pass through a gantry and you don't have an RFID tag, it will pick up your number plate and then you can make your toll payments at something like a petrol station. And if you don't pay, the fine will then be sent to your house or your place of residence. But in Malaysia, people seem to love fancy, non-standard number plates. And those are very hard for a computer program to pick up. I mean, some of them are so bad that even I don't know what they're saying. So, how do we solve this? Well, for starters, we can enforce stricter controls over standardized number plates and really crack down on those who don't comply. 
then we have to make sure that everybody has an RFID tag too. So maybe bundling it with your road tags would work. That way everybody is guaranteed to have one. At the end of the day, there are still so many things that Touch and Go will have to figure out in this four to five year time span that they've given themselves before they completely kill our existing systems. But I don't think that these are problems that are impossible to solve. So I'm hopeful because the technology is there and they seem willing enough to push us forward. Right now, it's all about culling the old so that they can bring in the new. The coming months and years will definitely be interesting and I'm very curious to see how all of it pans out. In the meantime though, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you guys think of RFID in Malaysia? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, and if you want like a really deep dive into everything we already know about the RFID system, I'll link my article in the video description. So you can definitely check that out. But that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked it. And if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the little notification bell icon so that you don't miss any one of our new uploads. And like us on Facebook. Also, keep your browser locked to SirChinChow.com for the most refreshing slices of tech news. I'm Rory. This is Sir Chin Chow. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.